Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This week's story is called Luna Moth. I hadn't seen Stefano for six months, not since we had broken up. It wasn't one of the nice breakups either. He was the fire and I was the oil. We'd yelled and screamed, then he accused me of stealing from him. I hadn't. He'd sent me an email later telling me that he had found the money and that he was sorry. I had already moved out. That chapter had closed and I had moved on. 270 miles away to Anaheim, California. Except, no matter how far away I got, the chapter never really closed. I rode my bike, a custom Triumph Thruxton, all the way back to the small town I had left, Dead Man's Butte, Nevada, about an hour's ride north of Vegas. It was January, cloudy, and even the Nevadan desert cooled down for the winter. It wasn't cold, just cool. My dad had called me last night. Stefano was in a serious car accident. They don't expect him to wake up. If you want to say goodbye, you'd better hurry. In spite of how we ended, I still loved him. I passed through Vegas and took US 93 North. It hadn't changed much since I had been here last. Neither had the Butte. Small towns never change. The Long Ridge Memorial Hospital is the only hospital in the Butte. After parking, I walked inside and checked where his room was. Standing by the huge aquarium in the emergency room waiting area, I took a deep breath and spent a moment to calm myself. A big spiked fish swam around as if it owned the aquarium. A lionfish, I think. I remember the first time Stefano and I had kissed. We took shelter under an awning on one of the few evenings it had rained. Before either of us knew what had happened, we had kissed. The kiss didn't end when the rain stopped. It continued at my place. Nobody had been so full of life and passion as Stefano. As painful as it was to see him again, I never expected him to be dying. I'd said goodbye, then head to my parents' place for the night and ride back to California tomorrow. Dad could tell me when the funeral was, and I'd come back for that. I walked to the elevator, hesitant about what I'd see. A couple of nurses with a gurney and a patient wheeled towards the elevator, and I stepped out to let them go first. When the elevator came back, I relaxed my shoulders and climbed in. The elevator dinged for the second floor, and I walked down the hall to his room. The room had two beds, both full. Stefano lay in the bed by the door with a couple of chairs around it. A jacket lay on one side, and a laptop case sat next to the other. The laptop was on a table next to the bed. Those probably belonged to his parents. When I saw Stefano, my hand went to my mouth, and I couldn't stop the tears. Bandaged almost to the point where I could barely see his face, his left eye and left ear and most of his skull lay hidden. A few drops of blood stained the linen. Swollen and purple, his right eye was a mass of dark-colored splotches. He had bruises and cuts on his left arm. A giant cast covered his right arm almost to the shoulder, and a tube exited his nose and went to some machine at the side of his bed. Part of his hair had dried blood in it. The heartbeat monitor droned a steady but slow beat. His blood pressure seemed low. The breath I let out stifled the sob. Hey, lover, I whispered. Remember me? Of course he didn't respond. His heart rate increased a little. Maybe on some deep subconscious level, he knew I was here. I came to see how you were doing, I said. According to Dad, you picked a fight with a cement truck. I think the cement truck won. The television gave a steady monotone background noise that gave us a little privacy. I took the chair on his left side and held his hand. On the underside of his wrist was his only tattoo, a brilliant green luna moth. I had one on the same arm, same place, because we'd gotten them together. Do you remember that time you kissed me? Then somehow we fell into the swimming pool? You always said it was an accident, but I knew better. I ran my thumb over the back of his hand. It had a blood pressure monitor on one finger, and he had an IV in his arm. I figured it out. It was your way of making me take those wet clothes off. I said. Remember what we did later? Back at your place? The heart rate monitor beeped as slow as ever. 
Do you remember the night I moved in? We had Chinese. Then we spent hours organizing my things. I didn't think I had that much, but you made it fun. You always knew how to spice up my life. I stared at the face I knew so well, at the curve of the lips, the softness of his skin, the violent color of the bruises. I still have those tokens from the casino you took me to for my birthday, I said. You even got us the honeymoon package, and we stayed there for three days. Do you remember? If I expected Stefano to magically wake up and hug me, I was wrong. He didn't move. When did we start fighting, I said. It seems stupid now. You knew how to dress, and you were only trying to help me look good. My pride got in the way. Our first fight. I still feel guilty about that. Stefano didn't move. That last fight, I whispered, I'd bought rings and I wanted to propose. I didn't know how to get the words out or when would be the right time. We'd been having problems for a long time, but I never noticed. Every couple has a tough time sometimes. And I should have seen your pain. Then it was too late. I'm sorry about that. An ambulance pulled up to the hospital, sirens blaring. They cut off and people shouted to each other. I still have the rings, I said. I've dated a couple of times since we broke up, but no one compared to you. I should have come back sooner and maybe we could have worked things out, but my pride got in the way again. Some kind of commotion happened in the hall. Now it's too late for us, I said. Why don't you take the ring with you? I don't think I'll need it. It's been six months and I can't get over you. I slid the ring on his finger, then leaned over him and kissed his cheek. Stefano, you might not believe this, but you were the best thing that ever happened to me. When you get to heaven, put in a good word for me. If spirits drink, I'll buy you one, and we can finally talk like we should have. I brushed his hair with my fingers, just like I used to. Goodbye, lover. As I walked away, Stefano gripped my hand, and his voice cracked as he tried to speak. Don't go, he whispered. A tear trickled down from his eye. Is it too late to say yes?